So, Brayburn. Bray. Braymeister. For a long time now, you've been seen and not heard. Gone for season two, cameos in seasons three and four. I can only imagine the storm your return caused for shippers. Oh yes. As one of only three nice stallions in season one, the law of supply and demand require that you be shipped with her. And her. And her. And her. 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 And that's not even covering the same sex and just playing crazy ships. You know, it'd be faster to list all the folks you haven't been shipped with. Oh, oh, I see how it is. What, you think I'm not good enough? I mean, I don't swing that way, but it's the principle, dang it. The principle. <sighs> Send in those soulful and doleful schmaltz by the bowlful clown. Is that question directed at me? Totally! This place is a cutie mark gold mine! Oh well, now I just feel silly. I guess we're overdue for an episode where the Crusaders' primary motive, at least at first, is to get their cutie marks. We've had episodes where they've been dealing with bullies, facing limitations, sibling issues, bad dreams. I gotta say, the cutie mark Crusaders are usually more interesting when they aren't pursuing their cutie marks, because the real struggle is to understand themselves. And this episode raises the question of how much a cutie mark really serves as one's identity. Applejack's around to fill in for Brayburn, who injured his leg in a haystacking practice. Apparently, the injury has also decreased his reliability because this guy can't keep track of three foals to save his life. I'm going to be doing some comparisons between this episode and Over a Barrel because this really is an indication of how far the show has evolved since the first season. Though that's not to say it's totally positive. Case in point, check out the designs of these background ponies. The varied colors, the unique looks, the stronger western theme overall. That's a huge step up from the olden days of, look, it's Caramel with a western hat. Instead, we have Time Turner with Caramel's cutie mark and a new hat. Well, can't abandon the classics. And yet, remember all the jokes they fit into just a few seconds? Like horse-drawn carriages. Okay, you pull now. Ah, we just switched. And now they're horse-drawn, horse-drawn carriages. And here's where we have our Wild West dances. And here's where we have our Mild West dances. I make a big deal out of this because chances to go outside of Ponyville or Canterlot are pretty rare, so when we get to a new town, I hope to see some personality to the setting. In fact, Over a Barrel was a big part of setting that hope. Look out! Along with the hope that nothing will try to harm me. I... I don't know how to react to this. Turns out there's some kind of desperado causing trouble. It's Trouble Shoes. See, there's some setting humor to enjoy. All right, now I called for a meeting, not a mob scene. Whoa, buddy, we do not throw torches willy-nilly. <coughs> Dude, just take the hat off. You're not fooling anyone. Speaking of unsafe, Applejack ponders being responsible and taking the kids away from a trouble spot. But Brayburn argues on behalf of his beloved hometown. I can't fault him for saying, This rodeo is important to Appaloosa. I can, however, fault him for not following through on watching the Phillies. Again. Because I like Brayburn. You know how often I criticize that this show seems afraid to let stallions and mares work together? Well, that started with Brayburn. That Appaloosa stuff got old fast. But then this happened. That information will be quite helpful. This was his home at risk. He cared about his neighbors. And he was open to finding a non-violent solution. There was no alpha male nonsense with this guy. He just wanted to do the right thing. And then he disappeared. As soon as that scene was over, he was not a true part of the story anymore. And son of a gun, that happens again. He'll make appearances later on, but his role in this story is over at 6 minutes and 13 seconds. Worst idea ever. You know, sweetie, simply saying that but not taking action doesn't make you smarter than your friends. And this is first class stupidity on their part. I guess one near-death experience wasn't enough to keep them from repeating the same mistake. Oh, what am I saying? The last time Apple Bloom did this, she earned her sister's respect with only a few weeks grounding as punishment. But seriously, three children trying to find a criminal? You want to know how that would usually end up? And that's the kid-friendly version! The kid-friendly version! Now, to the episode's credit, we get to see the Crusaders acting more as individuals than in past episodes. Apple Bloom is the most driven and single-minded. Sweetie Belle remains the voice of caution, but doesn't seem to have the assertiveness to get the others to listen. 
Scootaloo is more about bravado, but it quickly evaporates when it begins to rain. And I hope AJ and company aren't going to let that hay get too wet. It turns out wet hay favors the growth of organisms, which can generate heat and increase the hay temperature up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, chemical reactions take over and... I... I'm really not used to being the safe one. The Crusaders find shelter and the massive trouble shoes, who promptly knocks himself out in a panic. You alright? Surely. No, that's Apple Bloom. Tell that to the flank! Sir, I abhor you! There are children present! I am sorry that Brayburn remains a minor note here, but Trouble Shoes is another fun character to talk about. He believes that his upside-down horseshoe means bad luck. Folks rightly corrected me when I said, You don't just wake up and say, Oh, I know what I want to do with the rest of my life. Because that's just what happened to Chira Lee. I woke up to find that a cutie mark had appeared. And yet she knew exactly what that mark meant while Trouble Shoes lived Apple Bloom's worst fear of having a mark he didn't like. That somehow he was doing what he loved, but the mark appeared because he was in the right setting but not the proper role? This highlights a concern in a season that focuses on cutie marks. Is this a branding for talent or a symbol for identity? And that's an important distinction because, to quote the late Terry Pratchett, talent just defines what you do. It doesn't define what you are. So yeah, kind of a big deal if this episode muddies the waters. It's hard to follow a theme when there seem to be two similar yet distinct ideas. I'd rather talk about the humor and why Troubleshoe's misfortune stops being comical fast. Apple Bloom quickly realizes that he's missed his mark and he's intended to be a rodeo clown rather than a competitor. Yes, she sees him in physical pain and concludes he's meant to do this for their amusement. Bloom, I'm worried about you. And because he's a good guy at heart, Troubleshoe sees them home only to get arrested. And while the Crusaders can't speak up for him in the moment, they hold their silence all night and hide the truth to avoid getting punished? While Troubleshoe sits in jail? What the hell, kids? What the actual hell? Yeah, yeah even, even by, by my, my standards. standards. That's, That's messed, messed up. up. Lots of folks compare Troubleshoes to Eeyore. But I gotta ask, how much of Eeyore's humor was physical pain? Eeyore made us laugh partly because his depression contrasted against his friend's enthusiasm. The difference made it funnier. Troubleshoes doesn't have anyone to play off like that. Instead, he's taking Eeyore's depression and adding constant physical abuse. It's like kicking someone after they've fallen. We might laugh at the wounded pride of a tumble, but add physical abuse immediately after and it starts to feel perverse. So I guess I should take comfort that the Crusaders helped Troubleshoes accept himself by busting out of jail. Why did Sweetie swipe the keys with her fledgling magic when they got the sheriff to just stroll out, you may ask? Best answer I can think is that it guarantees the sheriff won't take them on the way out. And pony powers of observation prove fickle once again, as no one takes note of the titanic-sized clown now running havoc to everyone's delight. How about your big sis, huh? Yeah, way to go. Harsh. But we get the classic hurried ending of big reveal, heartfelt speech, all is forgiven. This episode feels like it's all over the place. We're in Appaloosa, but that's not the focus. The Crusaders want their marks, but that's not the focus. Troubleshoes has an issue, but it's all about his cutie mark, which seems to go against a lot of what we've seen thus far. What exactly am I rooting for? That Troubleshoes stop pursuing what he loves and settles for what he's assigned? He's anything but unhappy at the end, but despite his insistence, this doesn't seem like something he really yearned to do. The Crusaders do well despite my joking. They're gaining and sharing insight on what it means to know oneself. I just wish the show could find a focus on whether or not that is all displayed by one mark. And like I say, the humor can run a little thin when Troubleshoes is already life's plaything. But there are funny moments thanks to Appaloosa's residence. I don't dislike the episode, but it's only breaking even. I do love that this episode introduces us to another likable male character. And you, Great Mountain, you have redefined the term big in this show. With that in mind, would you pardon me? <coughs> by the power invested in me by absolutely no one, I hereby dub thee Moderate Macintosh. I'm Silver Quill, thanks for watching. Oh. Uh -huh.